Too many Americans working harder than ever just to get by, let alone get ahead. That was President Obama today, hammering his priority from the State of the Union this week. The Republicans in Congress may disagree, but it turns out their constituents share quite a bit of the president's analysis. A recent Pew poll finds 65% of Americans say the gap between the rich and everyone else has grown over the last decade. And there's no big polarization here. That's pretty interesting. This includes 61% of Republicans and 68% of Democrats. Now, maybe that consensus scares some louder members of the 1%, because Politico is reporting that the co-founder of one of the nation's oldest venture capital firms fears a possible genocide against the wealthy. Residents of Manhattan's Tony Upper East Side say the progressive mayor didn't plow their streets as a form of frosty revenge, and the co-founder of Home Depot recently warned the Pope that he should pipe down about economic inequality. The nation's wealthiest denizens of the loftiest slice of the 1% political reports appear to be having a collective meltdown. Joining us now to unpack some of this is venture capitalist Nick Hanauer. Nick, I hope you don't mind me saying this, uh, but it is publicly reported that you have founded some very successful companies. You have uh, quite a bit of money by any measure. Um, let's start yeah. right there. Do you feel under attack? Uh, well, no, but I, but I do understand why some of these folks are, are melting down. Um, and, and it, you know, it all comes down to this. I mean, I've been talking about economic inequality for a while, and what I've learned is it's a super emotional issue for people. And that's because, you know, when one of these folks calls themselves a job creator, you know, it, it really sounds like what they're doing is describing the economy, but they're doing something which is much more important uh, and different, which is that they're really making a claim on status, privileges, and power. Mm. And, and, you know, when you start talking about the problems, problems of inequality, you're threatening a particular way of understanding where prosperity comes from. You're threatening the orthodox sort of trickle-down view that, you know, if you pour money into rich people like an ingredient, prosperity for everyone will sort of squirt out. Let me jump and, in there and, and see if I'm we, understanding yeah. you, Nick, because it sounds like you're making a distinction between just having a lot of money, right, which is a factual economic yeah. situation, and having the status of being seen as a productive or super special member of the economy. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, I think that people are freaking out because, you know, if you accept the orthodox view, rising inequality is a feature of prosperity. It's how you know the country is getting better. Uh, but if you see the economy in a, in a more, you know, realistic way, uh, you know, rising inequality clearly is, represents a death spiral of falling demand. This is what uh, President Obama was talking about. A few people are getting richer and richer, and everyone else is getting worse off. I mean, the problem is, is that the real economy actually does resemble the game of Monopoly. When one person has all the money, the game is over. <laughs> and, of course, this is perfectly charming when you're playing with a few friends, but in a real economy, that's a very serious problem. Right, and, and you're hitting, on, you're hitting uh, on something there, what you just said, that the metric right according to a sort of one percent or right-wing dogma the very metric yeah. of success relates to the idea that there should be uh, drastically increasing inequality as if that doesn't also correspond yes. to our tax policies the way we distribute power politically labor right. uh, and and right. economically let me play for you someone who strongly disagrees as part of this which is venture capitalist Tom Perkins right I don't feel personally threatened uh, but I think that a very important part of America, namely the creative 1%, are threatened. The 1% are not causing the inequality. They are the job creators. Your response there. Well, there you have it. I mean, you know, and what Tom is saying there is that 1% of the people in the country matter and the other 99% don't. And that's, a, and that's this very orthodox view. But the, the problem, of course, is that uh, uh, while, you know, uh, the people who uh, are entrepreneurs and create companies are, are a very important part of the economy, uh, if no one else has any money, who will buy the stuff, hmm. right? This is the problem. Uh, it, you know, it, it's just this ridiculously sort of insular 
way of looking at the world uh, to presume that the one percent mean everything and no one else uh, has any uh, has any value in the economy and nothing could be further from the truth this that Tom's view represents the orthodox view that uh, thriving middle class is the consequence of prosperity it's people like him who create the middle class and nothing could be further from the truth we now uh, I think can see very clearly that a thriving middle class is the source of growth and prosperity in capitalist economies. It's where entrepreneurship comes from and it's where the demand comes from that drives the economy in general. And briefly, do you think the State of the Union emphasis on social mobility was a step forward here and does it relate to the hysteria that you're documenting? Yeah, I mean, I think that President Obama uh, focusing attention on uh, the lack of mobility, increasing inequality, uh, you know, issues like the minimum wage are crucial to moving the country forward. And I, you look, I am one of those one percenters, or actually one one hundredth of one percenters. Um, I, you know, I believe in uh, th that capitalism and, and, and the right to make a lot of money, but we have to bring the economy back into balance. We have to have an economy that works for every American, not just one percent. Of us. Yeah, I mean, that's, and that's what's been striking about some of your work here and, and some of the talks you've given around the country, the middle out frame, and you're really hitting right. on something. When you use that word privilege or status, it goes to that, that sort of 1% pride, which is an interesting and sometimes disturbing part of this. Nick Hanauer gets tonight's last word.